Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Baseball Replay Journal, uh, where we have another game for you here on uh, April 25th, 1949. The uh, Boston Braves are at Ebbets Field here to take on the Brooklyn Dodgers. The uh, Boston Braves playing quite well this season, 5-2 and two so far. Dodgers are one and six, and here comes uh, Ralph Branca. And the first thing that happens, and this is the sort of way that the uh, season has been so far for the Dodgers, you really feel sorry to see this. But um, as uh, Bob Elliott comes up, uh, he uh, <clears throat> has a little dribbler um, that um, is down to a Campanella, and uh, Roy pounces on that one, and he throws it over the head of Gil Hodges to first base, and uh, that ends up allowing Bob Elliott to go all the way over to second base. And uh, that is the first play of the game. And uh, that is not the way that the Dodgers wanted this one to start. My goodness. Um, I was thinking to myself as I went over this lineup, and you'll see here I've made changes for both teams. I'm trying to uh, keep these lineups sort of up to date, um, make it realistic, as I would expect a manager to actually do in real life. The first thought that I had is, oh, my goodness, you know, well, maybe with these changes in the lineup, it'll change the um, luck that the Brooklyn Dodgers have been having is that Dark takes the ball. Now he uh, takes a strike there, one on one, another pitch on him. And uh, he hits a little lyrical fly ball over to uh, Snyder. It's one away. And here's Eddie Stanky now, who uh, grounds over to Hodges, and that moves Elliott up to third base, two outs now. But I tell you, for the Dodgers, that hasn't changed their luck at least so far here in this game. Let's see if they can get out of this inning. <clears throat> 2 0 now the count on Marv Record. And there's a strike. Uh, 2 1 now. 2 2 now. Branca getting back. And uh, Rickard uh, swung and missed. And that's strike three. So maybe that's a little bit of good luck for the Dodgers. We'll see. Here's Jackie Robinson, a little top fly. I kept Robinson at the number one spot, even though he's not hitting that well so far. Um, Robinson has a very good on base percentage, and that's what we like to see. However, he uh, fails to get on base there. Hits a little one over to Stanky. There's one away. Marv Rackley now. We uh, took Hermansky out. We're going to try Marv Rackley here at left field. And um, I have the same problem that the Dodgers had in real life. Rackley gets the base hit. The question is, who's your left fielder? And with Cal Abrams not at the major league level, there still is that question as to who the uh, left fielder is for the Dodgers. Pee Wee Reese now hitting 250, one of the few Dodgers who's hitting anything. And uh, there's a ball to a Reese. Rackley, Stave at first on that uh, pickoff play. Uh, another ball, 2-0 oh now on uh, Reese, and uh, another throw to first by Boisel, nothing doing. 2-1 and one now, the count on him. They're looking at that excellent running rating from uh, Rackley, but I'm uh, not going to steal another way that the Dodgers have been playing. What was that, 1-6 and six on the season so far? Yeah, we're not going to take a lot of uh, chances here. Reese winds up uh, working the walk off of Boisel, ninth walk of the season for Bill and uh here's duke snyder and this is where the problems start hitting 192 so far 101 now the pitch to snyder and uh, that's a yeah that one misses two and one now two and two now on the duke duke a flat push up and he hits one to left and uh rickard's got that one and we're not going to test his arm no point in doing that that's going to be too close to third base carl ferrillo now hitting 179 and you can see the problems that brooklyn has been having so far this season if you can't hit the ball what's going to happen 2-1 pitch to him now and that's a base hit there for ferrillo and he scores one run uh, rackley's able to score from second we're going to hold reese again i don't think that ball was hit quite deep enough for anything to happen and uh, that's one of the very few good things that's happened so far for Brooklyn in this young season. But you never know. Two good things, I guess, you can say have happened today. The first one is they had that um, runner on first base or third base with uh, two outs. The Braves did, and nobody scored. Um, and uh, after that, here is this uh, play, this uh, base hit for Ferrillo with uh, two outs here in the uh, bottom of the first inning. And it's a one nothing game. And, uh, hey, that's better than nothing. <clears throat> Gil Hodges now. 154 Gil Hodges is hitting. Lines one foul over third base. 0 and 2. Takes a ball. And uh, 2 and 2 now on Hodges. And uh, he lunges back and swings for that one. And uh, with that one, he strikes on the breaking ball. And the problems continue for Gil. Now, 2 nothing is the account on Earl Torgerson called ball 3 now. And uh, Brank is able to get the strike there. And another delivery. Now is a full count. And he gets Torgerson to strike out. Branca having a pretty good season so far this year. Um, but uh, gives up a, a, a double there to uh, Russell. And um, here comes Tommy Holmes now. Tommy Holmes not hitting much of anything at all. But he gets a base hit there. And here comes Russell tearing around uh, third base. And here comes the throw home. And Campanella can't make the tag. The throw has him beat. The throw has him beat, and uh, Campanella just cannot get that tag down. And this is not Roy Campanella's game. 
My goodness, this is not Roy Campanella's game. And just like that, the score is tied. The score is tied with one out, runner on first base, and uh, Tommy Holmes. And um, that, again, is the way that the season has been so far for the Brooklyn Dodgers. You wonder how long this is going to last. Now, I know my simulation games, this isn't going to last forever. They're going to turn it around eventually. The question is whether there will be enough time for them to come back when they turn it around. As it stands now, they're not losing in this game as the one two pitch comes into Macy. Two and two now on him. They're not losing. They're not playing horribly as the count goes full, but uh, they're playing bad enough um, that it could be tricky. A little pop fly to Snyder. That's two away. And here comes Wazell. Should be an easy out. We'll see if Branca can get him. One one now the pitch on Bill. And a little ground ball to the right side. And they can't get him. It's a base hit for Bill Wazell. And here comes Bob Elliott again. Bob Elliott was on on that awful play by uh, Campanella there at the uh, very top of the first in the beginning of this game. It's a little uh, ground ball down to Reese, and that's that. And uh, the uh, Braves get the one run of the inning, and on comes uh, Billy Cox. 2-0 pitch now on Cox, and now it's 3-0 on him. And uh, Cox draws the walk, another walk given up by Voiselle. And uh, here's Campanella coming up. I told you he's having a bad year. 118 Roy is hitting, which is why he's in that number 8 spot. He needs to start hitting. If uh, the Dodgers can't hit, how are they going to do anything? 1-2 now Campanella, who uh, hit a long foul ball, and Campanella strikes out. Two strikeouts, strikeouts now for Voiselle, and here comes Ralph Branca with one out. It's a little high pop fly behind, third, for, uh, behind first base. Stinky winds up getting it, and there's two away. And here's Jackie Robinson. Robinson hits the one to left field, and it doesn't drop. It hangs up there, and that's the end of the second inning. Um, we go to the top of the third. It was a blast to right field, but the Frill is back there to catch. So that was off the uh, bat of uh, Al Dark. Eddie Stanky now coming up, one out. And uh, there's another base hit for Boston. Eddie Stanky gets the uh, quick and clean base hit. One and another pet. Now the pitch on uh, Marv Rickard. One and one on him now. There's a little fly ball to Ferrillo, and there's two away now. Here comes Earl Torgerson. Uh, he takes a strike. And uh, another strike, 0-2, oh, now the pitch on him. And boy, that one was just um, outside, and the crowd looked at that with their hearts, not with their eyes. 2-2 uh, two and two now, the pitch on him, and there's a little fly ball to left field, and that does that, and we go to the bottom of the third inning. And uh, that brings up Rackley again, 2-0 oh, now, the pitch on him. He looks at a strike, 2-1 and one now on Rackley, and that one's popped up in the air, and uh, Macy cannot get to it. And 2-2 two, two now, the pitch on him, a little ground ball to Elliott, and he gets him at first base, one away. Here's Pee Wee Reese. Uh, Pee Wee Reese had a uh, walk earlier on in this game. Two another pitch on him, swinging a miss on that fastball. Two and one on him now. Three and one. We'll see if they walk him again. Now that changeup is in there for a strike, and uh, he fouls one off. And that one's hit to Stanky at second base. Two outs, and here's Duke Snyder. Duke Snyder swings through the high fastball. Oh, and one on him. One one now the pitch on the Duke. Duke of Flatbush takes uh, another ball. Two one. And Duke Snyder hits a home run over the fence in uh, right field, deep into the gap out there in right field. Nothing in here, unfortunately, about uh, whether it went over a sign or anything like that, though I believe that is the part of the ballpark at Abbott's Field that has the signage. And uh, just like that, um, the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers finally have something to cheer about. <clears throat> they talk about the uh, crowd roaring. I don't know how many people are at this game with the Dodgers 1-6 and six here in uh, April. School is still in session, right? So uh, how many kids are uh, missing school on this Monday to go watch the Dodgers play? And uh, Ricker hits a little fly ball there to a left field. And uh, that does that. Or there's a fly ball to Ricker in left field. My apologies. And that does that. 2-0 now the pitch on Jim Russell. 2-1 and one on him. Top of the fourth inning. 2-1 Dodgers. And uh, Russell uh, gets the base hit to uh, center field. Uh, that is good living there. And there's another little uh, play-by-play gem for you. Um, Rickard, or, uh, Russell rather making a short work of that little Branca flas- fastball. And uh, Branca continues to struggle this season. Um, and... Uh, I say he continues to struggle. He actually has a fairly good ERA so far this season. Um, but uh, five hits given up in this ball game, and even with a 2-1 lead, you have this feeling that uh, Doomsday might be approaching for the Dodgers. Holmes grounds out, grounds uh, and sends uh, Russell second base one away. Here's Phil uh, Massey now. 1-0 the pitch on him. Macy, Massey, not sure how to say it. 1-1 one one now the pitch. 1-2. And, and there's a fastball down and in on Phil. 2-2 two and two now. Little uh, ground ball to uh, Robinson at short, and then moves Russell up. And here's Bill Voisel with a uh, runner on third base. Voisel one for one in this game. Had that base hit last time. 
0-2 oh, now on Vazel. Takes a fastball up and in, 1-2 on him. A foul ball, and that one goes uh, past um, Campanella. Sort of bounces off his mask. 2-2 two two now. Vazel's fouling off the pitch, spoiling another one, and Branca gets him in the end. Third strikeout of the game for Branca. Gil Hodges now, and uh, Vazel misses with the fastball. Misses again, 2-0 and oh now on Hodges. There's a strike on him, 2-1. and one. Hodges leans out of the way of that one, three and one, cuts on and missed, and the full count, and Hodges gets that walk third walk of the ball game by Blazell. And boy, if this continues to happen, um, that might uh, work out well for the uh, Dodgers. We'll see what happens. Oh, two now the pitch on Billy Cox. One and two now um, comes the pitch on Cox, and Blazell misses with the uh, change, two and two. There's another ball off the play, and let's see if Bill walks him. Nope, little gr- double play ground ball. And just like that, there are two away here, bottom of the fourth inning. And uh, this uh, brings a boy Campanella, 2 0 now the count on Campy. And there's a long, long fly ball to deep center field. That baby is gone. And it looks like the Dodgers may have found their power. Here we go 3 1 Dodgers, bottom of the fourth inning. And just like that. Just like that, uh, the National League champions look like they are on the ropes. And boy, all of that talk about are the Dodgers dead is starting to look a little bit silly right now. It's still early in the season. Remember, this is that part of the season where you can really get things turned around if you can start streaking. Now, you can only play one game at a time. and We're not going to do a whole bunch of autoplay or any of that junk. Branca walks next, and up comes Jackie Robinson. We play our replays the right way here in the Baseball uh, Replay Journal. We uh, play him the right way. We play every game by ourselves. 1-1 one, one pitch on uh, Robinson. And uh, Robinson beats out an infield hit. It's actually Branca who beat that one out. Um, uh, avoids having the uh, uh, force out at second base. 1-0 now the pitch on uh, Rackley. And he hits it to right field. Nothing new one. 3-1 Dodgers go to the top of the fifth inning. <clears throat> Here's Bob Elliott. 1-1 one, one the pitch on him. That one's low and inside. 2-1 and one now on Elliott. And uh, there's that pitch by Brank. It just hits that outside corner. One and two on him now. And uh, a little foul ball. And now a uh, full count. And there's another little foul ball. And uh, that one's just below the knees. And, uh, man, Elliot doesn't know it. And uh, he uh, stands there for a second, sort of scratching his head till the umpire says, go take your base, son. And uh, then uh, Bob finally uh, moseys on over to uh, first base, and I bet the uh, crowd there at the Ebbets Field is going to have a good laugh out of that one. And uh, that's uh, the way that it is here at the top of the fifth inning, runner on first base and nobody out. And here is Al Dark, always dangerous as Dark. Um, and uh, he takes that as a, a high ball. 0 oh, for 2 so far today, ball uh, for Dark. 2 and 1 now the count on him. Uh, Brank has popped him up, but that one is foul. And Brank misses again, full count now on him. And uh, Dark swings the ball, four strikes out. That is strikeout number four for Ralph Branca. Having a better game than I thought. I'm a little bit worried about him, though, and that's what happens when you manage the team. 0-2 oh, now, the count on Eddie Stanky. Stanky holds up in time, avoids the strikeout, but he doesn't that time. Branca with a good breaking ball. That is strikeout number five. Runner still at first base. Now there are two away, and here's Marv Rickard. 0-1 oh, now on Rickard as he swings and misses. 1-1 one, one now. Checked the swing that time. 2-1 and one now. And a little ground ball to Reese, that does it. And uh, we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Here comes Pee Wee Reese after making that quick little infield play. One and one now the pitch on Reese, and that's a strike. One and two now comes the pitch on him. Two and two now on uh, Pee Wee, and there's a three and two pitch. And uh, Reese fouls the one off just a little bit. Fouls another one off. Three one Dodgers here, bottom of the fifth inning. And uh, Reese hits that one over to center field. And, and uh, actually, it's uh, Dark who makes that uh, play. The shortstop, a little bit uh, shallow center. Duke Snyder up now. 1-1 one, one now is the count on Duke. And there's a uh, blast to deep right. That one's foul. 1-2. One and two, and uh, he hits one to deep center, but not deep enough to do much of anything. I thought the Dodgers' power was coming back. And uh, we've had a lot of long fly balls. That's all we've had so far. Ferrillo, 3-0 pitch on Ferrillo. And Wazell loses him. Bill Wazell not having a good game already. A hundred pitches here, and we're only in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two no now on Hodges. Wazell's not going to last very long. In fact, we might as well uh, watch this pitch. Now it's two and two. Hodges looks back in surprise and uh, hits a little uh, ground ball to dark, and that does it for that uh, inning. And uh, what's going on here? Um, 
a little unfriendly looking moment between the Brave Seer Torgerson and Roy Campanella. And uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly what was happening. Is there an argument? Is there some sort of tension between the team? The uh, play-by-play is not really telling us. The ball one comes into Torgerson. Um, and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on this one and uh, see if we can figure out exactly what's happening down there um, at the plate. Uh, 2-0 now on Torgerson as Branca um, is behind him. Now 3-0. And uh, there's ball of four, and that's only the second walk that Ralph Brank has um, given up here in the uh, top of the sixth inning. Jim Russell now, and remember, it's only three to one. The Braves can come back, and uh, Russell hits one to right, but that's right at Ferrillo. One away, and up comes Tommy Holmes. 1-0 pitch on him, and there's a little foul ball to the left side, and Billy Cox is able to reach over into the seats and grab it two away, and here comes Phil. Here comes the catcher, and uh, Torgerson steals the uh, base there on that first pitch. And uh, for Torgerson, that is um, his uh, fourth stolen base of the season against zero times caught stealing. So you can see here, you uh, simulation fans, that the computer is sort of overusing Torgerson in this excellent steal rating and this kind of odd, um, very good jump rating, right? 100 at-bats this season. Um, if we look at secondary, we see as 113 plate appearances. Now, those of you who are the uh, quick math geniuses will figure out we got, what, 26 hits? Combine that with 13 walks, so 39 times on base, and he um, had six different um, stolen base opportunities. Five stolen bases, one caught. Well, so far, he has stolen four bases. Um, there's nothing that will stop the computer manager from stealing and overstealing with Earl Torgerson. It's possible some of those might be my decision. I don't know. But uh, interesting to note here. And um, Phil hits that one to left field, and that is the third out. Stolen base does nothing. And Billy Cox now, it's a little foul ball. Fouls off another one, 0-2 now on Cox. And Billy Cox hits his first home run of the season. Bingo is right. And uh, the Dodgers' bats have come alive here, finally. And uh, just like that, it is to 4-1 Brooklyn. Now, is that enough? That's the question. Is that enough? Is that enough for Ralph Brank? Is that enough for them to uh, keep this going? Um, and uh, can they rely on the home run like this? These are all solo home runs, right? Look at those ones. The crooked number is not really that crooked. It's just a bunch of ones. Sort of binary there on the scoreboard, the 10110. And there's a tremendous play by Dark to take away a base hit from Campanella. And Branca breaks his bat. Two outs just like that. Here's Robinson. Wazell looks like he's uh, calmed down a little bit after giving up those uh, five walks. 2 0 on Robinson. Now 2 and 1. And that one's hit to a right center field, and Russell unable to uh, field it. And Robinson pulls up with his uh, first uh, triple of the season. And uh, we'll see if that changes things or not. Mauro Rackley now with a great scoring opportunity. 2 0 now the pitch on him. And there's a strike up, change up for a strike. And there's a little sinker in the dirt. 3 1. They're not, oh, they are pitching to him. 3 and 2 now. And uh, Rackley walks. They keep Bill in the game. Interesting, interesting strategy. 0-1 oh, now the pitch on Pee Wee Reese. He pops that one up in the infield. This is the problem that Brooklyn has, right? So it's a 4-1 game now, but how many scoring opportunities have they missed as we've gone along here? Boisel scheduled to be the first um, hitter of this inning, and my feeling is that they're going to put in a pinch hitter, and they do. It's Bill Salkeld, uh, who I almost put into to uh, start a catcher when I was making the lineup today. I decided in the um, end to go for Macy. 2-1 now, the uh, pitch to Salkeld. 2-2 two, two now, the pitch on him. 3-2 and two now, Branca in danger of losing him. Fouls that one back. And... Uh, he does lose him, and that's the third walk of the game for Branca. Five strikeouts and three walks so far in this game. Branca having a very active game. Salk held. Uh, someone missed a sign. I think there was supposed to be a hit and run, I believe. Salk held. What is the computer trying to do? I mean, what does his rating look like? A fair running rating, a fair stealing rating, a poor jump rating. That's a little bit aggressive, I think. I bet he will come in to catch, though. We'll see what happens. 0-2 oh, now is the pitch on Bob Elliott, and boy, I don't know about that decision. I don't think I would have done that, and I'm pretty aggressive. 2-2 two and two now. There's a bouncing ball off the glove of, Do of Hodges and past Robinson, and now that stolen base uh, attempt is starting to loom a little bit large because Al Dark would have been your potential tying run, and instead they try to steal with Elliott, and he's thrown out. So two 
runners caught stealing by Campanella so far in this inning, and that might be big because that rally is just running away. Those of you who subscribe to the uh, Sabermetric School of Thought as Dark hits the fly ball to left field, ends that inning. Those of you who subscribe to that uh, modern Sabermetric School of Thought will be happy to see this happen. Not necessarily because you want to see the Dodgers uh, win as Snyder hits a double, but rather because you want to see the proof that the stolen base might not always be the optimal strategy. <clears throat> A little pop fly to short by Farilla went away. Snyder still at second base. And there is a little pop fly by Hodges to center field. And uh, Snyder with the opportunity to score. We're going to send him home. Hodges will stay at first. <coughs> Snyder scores. Throw was offline. And it's 5-1 to one Dodgers. And that's what we wanted to see. And now we're starting to think maybe this is going to happen. Maybe we are far enough ahead. 1-1 one, one pitch now, and Cox not coming. It was a throw to first base. We're not doing anything with Hodges. We're not going to be that aggressive, not today. Not with the uh, Dodgers at 1-6 uh, for the year. Cox has struck out, and there is two outs now. Campanello with a little uh, pop fly to uh, the uh, first baseman, and that's it. Another one on the board for the Dodgers in this binary game, top of the eighth inning. <coughs> oh one one there on Stanky as he pops that one up foul. 0-2 oh now as he takes a fastball. 1-2 now. Brank is still in there going strong. 2-2 two two now the pitch. Branca strikes him out, and that's number 6 for Branca. Six strikeouts today from, um, for Ralph Branca. 0-1 oh now the pitch to uh, Marv Rickert, and it's 1-1 one one now. Campanelli going to have a little chat with him. And uh, Marv Rickert hits a home run, and this is kind of what you were worried about. 5-2 to two now, and this game is back within um, reach of the uh, National League champions. Do not say that it's over when you're facing the Boston Braves. Um, no matter how grim it might look for them, this is a good team. This is another one of those teams, and I've talked about that, and you know this as you've been watching us here. I've talked about this. There are a number of these teams in 1949 that are better than you think. Branca now closing in on 120 pitches. That's a long fly ball to right field by Torgas and Ferrillo able to go back there and get it. Two outs now. We're going to try to go as far as we can with Ralph because the Brooklyn Dodger bullpen after the last couple of games is in a sore, sore state. 0-2 oh, now in Russell, and uh, inside there's 1-2. and two. A little curveball hit on the ground, and uh, that's out uh, uh, to Robinson. Robinson throws two Hodges at first, and that's that. Branca now um, leading off, and you can tell already I'm going for that complete game for Branca. He uh, hits a little fly ball to a center field. Robinson now a little ground ball to Stinky at short, and two outs just like that. And here's Marv Rackley. One of the pitch on him, a little uh, pit ball lofted up to right center, and uh, the right fielder has it. That's Holmes out there. And that is the third out of the inning. And we go to the top of the ninth inning, and uh, it's been pretty quick, hasn't it? These games are fast when you uh, pay attention. Here is Holmes, who just made that out. 2-0 and now, the pitch on him. we got to watch Branca. Hope that he can throw some strikes. He gets a little pop-up. Well, 2-1 and one now. 2-2 two and two as he destroyed that bat of Holmes. Full count. Don't lose him, Ralph. And Ralph does lose him. Fourth walk of the ball game. And now we sort of uh, calm down, and we sit here and think about the situation. And we look down to the bullpens. You can see, as I'm looking at this, if you're looking... Um, on your computer monitor, you can see the problem that we have. We have a couple problems, right? And the biggest question I have is who starts tomorrow, right? Because uh, we can't start Erskine, who's pitched all of these pitches. What's that, 49, 50, about 70 pitches over these three games. Computer manager acting very foolish here. We're probably going to have to end up starting uh, uh, Pod Bielan tomorrow um, because we're not going to start McLaughlin. We could start Rex Barney, actually. Maybe that's what we end up doing. We start Barney then. Um, now, I don't know what the schedule looks like because if we have a game after that, we got to worry about it as well. I really need Branca to stay in and to try to finish this one up, honestly. Um, I don't want to start Pub Beal unless I absolutely have to. McLaughlin is a guy who I would go to um, if we needed a relief pitcher because these other pitchers need to get some sort of rest. I mean, we could go to Barney, but really, Barney, I want to uh, be my starter. As you can see, 20 games started. The thing that we really want is we want um, Don Newcomb to get out of the minor leagues and to come start for the team. I could talk about that for a long time. We're going to talk about Phil Macy here now. The runner on first base, nobody out. 1-0 now and 2-0 now is a pitch on him. And that one's 2-1. and one. And there's a little, um, little base hit to the right side. 
nothing doing, and uh, Macy has an infield single that moves Holmes to second base, and suddenly the uh, potential uh, tying run is up at the plate in uh, the person of Nels Potter, who's going to come out for a pinch hitter. Now, I don't think that Boston hit as much by the way of pitch, uh, by the way of pinch hitting, um, but you never know. And uh, this is one of the problems that uh, Brooklyn has. They need to get out of this inning, and they need to get out of the jam, because I tell you, if they lose another one of these games, here comes Pete Reeser. Pete Reeser, as we all know, the uh, I believe the former Dodger, right? And uh, we'll see what happens here. One and zero now. The pitch on Reeser, runners on first and second, nobody out. Two and zero. The pitch on him now. Branky misses inside. Three and zero. If he loses, Pete, we're going to the bullpen. And uh, the delivery is way off the plate. Branka loses him. That's it for Ralph Branka. Just as promised, McLaughlin's coming on. McLaughlin, so far this season, no appearances. Um, we need him to come on here, and we need him to put this one away. Bases are loaded now. The potential go-ahead run is in the, at the plate in the person of Bob Elliott. Nobody out, top of the ninth inning. Boy, aren't you happy you tuned in, you tuned in today. Come subscribe to this channel. You'll see one of these games every day. And I tell you, I wish I could tell you it's not always like this, but it almost always is. 1-0 now the pitch on Elliott. And uh, there's a fly ball over to center field. Duke Snyder makes the play. It's too deep for Snyder to make a play at home. 5-3 to three is the score as Tommy Holmes um, scores standing up. And uh, just like that, it's a 5-3 to three ball game. And uh, Brooklyn has something to think about. And up now is Al Dark, exactly the man who you don't want to see up in this situation. Runners on first and second, one out. Dark is 0 for 4, but pit, but hitting well this season. 1-1 one one now the count on him. Ground ball to the right side to Robinson, and that moves the runner over. Question is, do you want to pitch to Eddie Stanky? Do you want to put him on and pitch to Marv Rickard? Rickard hitting better so far this season. Looking at what they did in real life, um, Rickard also has a slightly better slugging percentage. Having said that, I kind of want to have that play at every base. This is a very, very important situation, I think, in this game, and I am going to go against what my instinct normally would tell me. I'm going to intentionally walk Eddie Stanky, and we're going to pitch to Marv Rickard. There's no place for McLaughlin to put anybody. Apologies for the sound as my dog is, I don't know what she's doing. Um, uh, there's no place uh, for McLaughlin to put anybody. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we'll see what happens. McLaughlin, uh, five uh, walks in the regular season, but 11 strikeouts. You kind of wonder, Pat McLaughlin, why didn't this uh, guy stay a little bit longer? Take a quick look at him. He's uh, 28 years old. I don't know very much about him. We'll have to uh, do some sort of research on him and see what he was actually like in real life. Number four hitter is Marv Rickert, and he hits a ground ball to Jackie Robinson on the first pitch. And that is a simple ground ball. And that does it, Robinson to Hodges, and that is the end of the ball game, just like that. I tell you, it's always exciting here on the uh, Baseball uh, Replay Journal, and boy, we have more games like this coming up for you. So with that, if you enjoyed that one, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and above all else, subscribe for more of these. Like I said, we have one of these every single day, and we're not stopping for a long, long time, baby, and I will see you tomorrow.